for more on the changing face of U.S. manufacturing. We're joined now by Al Angrisani. He's the former Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Labor Department. Welcome to our broadcast. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for having me. So the good news, U.S. manufacturing finished on a two-year high in January. But if my numbers are correct, it looks like the number of jobs declined by 5 million since 2000 in manufacturing. So what gives? Where is the U.S. with manufacturing? Well, your numbers are right. The U.S. is behind on manufacturing in a, in a major sort of way. And what they're trying to do is re rebuild that manufacturing base. But it's very difficult because <clears throat> there are a lot of macro events that are competing with the desire to, to create jobs. Okay, well, let's talk about President Trump. This has been, been his big issue. He criticized GM and Ford for their Mexico factories and their exports, urging them to set up more factories in the United States. But how can they do that when, if their numbers are right, their sales are down and there really isn't the demand for it? Well, I mean, they can do it because he asked them to do it. But the, the point of the matter is, does it make economic sense for them to do it? And right now, the, it doesn't because there are an awful lot of uh, these cross currents that I'm talking about. The overregulation of uh, the U.S. businesses here in the U.S., the cost of employment and a variety of other things makes it, uh, you know, not competitive for these companies to move the manufacturing jobs to the U.S., and that's why we're going to see either uh, increase in the prices of those goods or some form of tariff that, that basically makes it uh, harder to import goods into the U.S. if you're a U.S. company and manufacturing abroad. So there are a lot of issues here. It's not just simple. It's not just not as simple as saying, let's bring all the manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. Well, let's talk about technology. Today, the U.S. factories produce twice as much as they did in 1984, but with one-third fewer workers. Who's taking the jobs? Technology? Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And that's, a, that's one of those big cross-currents I'm talking about, those big macro factors. Technology is moving quickly. And what you have going on here that does <clears throat> give you some hope that the U.S. will be able to rebuild its manufacturing base is that a lot of the new manufacturing uh, opportunities are developing are small entrepreneurial ones that are enabled by technology. So if you're a big company and you've got to shift your technology, it's very difficult. But if you're a new startup with new technology, it's much easier to, to get going and to become competitive overnight. So I think you're going to see the U.S. manufacturing base rebuild around technology and entrepreneurs. So you essentially, Al, think that we could, the United States could, in fact, become more competitive because right now we're a strong number two, the United States is, uh, equal to Japan, Guam, and South Korea combined, but the U.S. could do even better? Yes, I, I absolutely do. If the entire agenda that the president is talking about is passed, that means you've got to lower regulations, you've got to deal with dumping, and you've got to enable technology from a capital formation perspective, which really means from a change in the tax code. If he does all three of those things, the U.S. will definitely be more competitive from a manufacturing perspective. How else uh, can the U.S. become more competitive? I mean, competing against China is not easy. No, that's very formidable. That's, that's, uh, that's a very big mountain to climb, and it won't happen overnight. It's going to take decades to get to the point that we potentially could even be competitive with, the ch with China from a manufacturing-based perspective. However, I think we can do better than we're doing, and it may not be important to be as big a manufacturing uh, uh, country as China is. What might be more important is to manufacture the right things, use the right technology, and build good, high-paying jobs. I don't think it's about quantity. I think it's about the quality of manufacturing that we do here and the quality of the jobs that we create. So if you've lost, if you're, if you're, let's say you are hypothetically uh, one of these workers who's out of work, whose jobs went overseas to Mexico, China, Vietnam, wherever, what advice would you give this worker and, and how hopeful would you tell him to be over the next, say, five years in finding a job in manufacturing? I guess it depends on where you live, many well, hypotheticals. Yeah, I mean, there has not been, I would not tell him to look for a job in manufacturing yet. Maybe they'll come back. <clears throat> I have counseled people on this, and what I've told them is that what they really should do is think about what their skill set is. Are they a machinist? Are they a mechanic? 
Are they uh, whatever the this particular skill set is that drives their manufacturing employment that they just lost? And quite frankly, I've counseled them to start their own businesses uh, because it's going to be much easier for them to get jobs as service providers, as consultants, as vendors than it is to get aligned with a long term manufacturing in, in job in the U.S. while the jobs are being exported. Now, if President Trump's capable of reversing that trend and bringing manufacturing back, then I would say you could go back to manufacturing as a career path. But their best bet right now is to become entrepreneurs and to do the very best they can with the skill set that they have. Very good advice. Well, Secretary Al Angrisani, thank you so much. We appreciate it.